Hello and welcome to another edition of Mountain Aromatics. Today I'm going to answer some questions. Three questions. Some, two of them I think I get constantly and one is um, not talked about, excuse me, not talked about too often. So I just thought I would talk to you some today to do a little bit of education that might be helpful. Um, I've touched on these in the past, but I still get these questions all the time. The first one I want to talk about is not talked about as often. So I had um, a couple of people lately say, well, when you do your videos, why aren't you using a scale? You're supposed to use a scale. Why are you doing drops? That is a very good question. I'm going to say that a lot of people who watch my videos, a number of them are just starting out. But also, yes, a number of you guys have been doing this for a number of years or a couple of years or that type of thing. It is going to be intimidating for a number of people who are just getting started, who have 30 materials and that's it. And I just want to encourage you to continue to explore. And if it's that you are writing out your formula and you are doing drops, I am all for it. You do not need a scale right now. It is all good. In the future, you are going to want to get a scale. Absolutely. So, yes, when I'm formulating, I use a scale. But a lot of times you will see me on here and there's times I don't use a scale. But that is because a huge majority of people, well, a huge, a number of people are going to feel intimidated with using a scale and think, oh, I can't do this, it's gonna, that's just too much and that, that type of thing. So I, if people start out just doing drops for even a long period of time and just get used to that and learn your materials, that is, to me, more important that you learn your materials than being exact, exact with weighing out your materials for your formula. Yes, you still need a scale because you want to bring, you want to take your material that you get and make it a 10% solution for formulating. So, Yes, you do need a scale because if you do, um, I'd say I was talking about patchouli dark on my last video. So you can use patchouli dark at 100%, but you can also make a 10% solution of it for when you formulate in a really small vial to do small formulas making creating a 10% is what you want to do so yes you need scale but when you're in beginning and you're doing a formula you do not have to you'll have to use a scale every single time you're going to get to that point but I just don't want this to be intimidating so that's my answer to that is that um, it'll come with time and no need to be intimidated. I'd rather you learn your materials. That's the most important thing and work with drops. It's all good. It's all good. 
Second thing I wanted to talk about is, so, okay, so I have a 10% final product and it is in a spray. So spraying on your product as opposed to you have a, your 10% final product just in a vial and like putting it on just like that and then dabbing. When you do this, it is going to be a little bit different. You're going to be like, how is it going to be different? Um, the molecules are just right here. And when you spray, you can spray just right there. You can spray out here. You can spray on your... Um, on your skin before you put your shirt on, which is what I do a lot of times. <clears throat> There's just a little bit of difference, and I just want to talk about those differences. So when I don't have my shirt on and I spray my skin and then I put my shirt back on, I do that when I don't want my fragrance to... permeate a room. It's more um, of a personal fragrance or I want it to be with me and not project. And yes, I already hear you. Well, it depends on the fragrance. You can have a fragrance that just really projects um, and has silage and all that. Yes, I get it. But there'd be a difference between you taking that fragrance and spraying it out here and spraying it on your clothes out here and spraying it on your skin and putting your shirt on over it. It will not project near as much. So I'm all I'm doing is discussing different places and ways to spray your fragrance. If you spray your fragrance out here and it goes all over you, it's spread out more, right? So, um, one, it's going to last a little bit longer on your clothes than it will on your skin because your skin is warm. And then two, it's going to be, um, spread out more. So when things are spread out more and opened up, remember, Alora talked about the rose that is a closed bud that's hard to smell because it's all trapped in there but then when you add the alcohol bloop, it opens up it's the same thing where it's like think of the closed bud when you just put your fragrance here and dap like that and the open bud that is sprayed like this and it's just everywhere all over going to be more open that way. So those are different ways you can apply your fragrance. So just wanted to talk about that because some it's something you may already know, but that's something you can discuss with people who are purchasing your fragrance or um, when you have when you're teaching about fragrance, when you're talking about it, if you already know about it. I just it's something you could dis discuss to teach other people. So, wanted to discuss that. Then, the next thing that I get constantly, which, of course, I can make many, many, many videos on, are fixatives. The number one question I get from people is, what's the best fixative? And I'm like, ha! Ah! Because that is a, um, that is such a huge question because I can't lie. It just, it depends. I would need to see your formula. Like, show me your formula with the direction you're trying to go in. And there's going to be a fixative that works much, much better with that formula, with a floral formula, than a fixative for 
a very dark um, labdomum amber um, dark musk fragrance like deep tobacco smoky there's going to be a different fixative for that than there's a different fixative for if your if your fragrance is a citrus fragrance decorated with other things so there that's where this takes education you need to go through and find out of the materials that you own which ones are fixatives that's the first thing so find out the fixatives that you have learn your fixatives learn those materials and learn which ones those fixatives that you have go with best and again this is not hard and fast rules there are no rules with this like it's just there's some fixatives that go better with certain formulas than other than with certain fragrances than others so the bottom line is is there are a number of fixatives out there that do have some specific aromas um like Say like there's some fixatives out there that smell like orange blossom. There are some fixatives out there a lot that smell like different types of wood. There and so that's the kind of thing to think about. Like with your formula that you're going for, would a fixative that has a little has some orange blossom in it would that be best for that? So that's kind of how you think about it and the other important thing is oh it's a fixative I want to put tons in there the thing to think about that and why you need to know your material is just because it's a fixative doesn't mean you want to use tons of it so your fragrance will last forever because it could absolutely turn your formula into just smelling like your fixative and you can barely smell all of the other things that you're really trying to create and and make happen so you the one thing I'll, i've said it many times is that i'm still am learning more and more and more that less is more and it's all about the blooming and opening up you, it, that is just everywhere with learning fragrances where it's concentrated you can't smell all the different dynamics and then you add alcohol I can open it up you know that type of thing it's very interesting it's very um, there's just always, always more to learn in perfumery. And sometimes it can be overwhelming, and that's where sometimes you have to just back up and try to make it simple again. Because it can be very, very simple, and you can make it simple, and it can get very complex really easy. And if you get overwhelmed, just back up from the complexity and make it simple again. And a lot of times that can help. Well, those are questions I get all the time. So if you have any questions, um, put your questions, comments below, and I will try to actually, I'm better at making a video, <laughs> at making a video than I am at answering questions and typing and taking, oh yeah. Um, it's just easier for me to make a video on it. So, but if you have any questions or um, have anything you think you would like me to make a video on, put it below and I will try to do that. And I appreciate your love and your support. And I hope you have a good day. I will see you on the next Mountain Aromatics.